Yes. Okay. And that's it. Are you familiar with him as I well? I know. Yeah. Okay. I know. Wonderful. Nice to have you here. And we're going to allow um, Colleen Peralta to begin her dissemination. Okay, first of all, thank you so much for allowing me to present to you guys today. I'm very excited about it. My name is Colleen Peralta. I am a DMP student at Western University. I'm here today to talk to you about my DMP project. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge Dr. Rodney Hicks. He has supported me and believed in me since day one of the DMP journey. I appreciate his attention to detail and his ability to make me think outside the box. He has been instrumental in every step of this journey. I'm extremely grateful. Dr. Marcelle Arnault is one of my mentors. She has supported my DMP journey from day one. She has taken endless phone calls and answered numerous questions while encouraging me every step of the way. Dr. Paul Creason and Sigrid Sexton for allowing me to conduct my project here on campus. And Dr. Joanne Armenia, and Dr. Julie Bean for their encouragement, support, and belief in me. Deeply appreciate it. Dr. Lisa Spruce and Amber Wood. Lisa, Dr. Lisa Spruce was one of my mentors. Both Lisa and Amber Wood are from the Association of Operating Perioperative Operating Room Nurses, and they are very supportive of my endeavors. For those of you who don't know, ARN is one of the two national nursing organizations that produce evidence-based practice standards. These standards are deemed by CMS and therefore healthcare settings are legally bound to carry out these standards. The ARN standards are in 5,000 hospitals and 5,000 surgery centers. So these guidelines affect over 10,000 organizations. I would also like to acknowledge Kathleen Mays for letting me utilize the Sim Lab and sharing her knowledge around simulation. And finally, my husband, Alex, who is my number one fan, always encouraging me to do well and supporting me even when I had no time to talk or eat dinner with him. He is wonderful. And I hope to make up the countless hours I was unavailable. And of course, my children, I hope I have made you both proud. I want to share with you the burdens of hospital acquired infections. Hospital acquired infections occur frequently. They, there are over 2.5 million hospital acquired infections each year, with 3.6% of these cases resulting in death. Hospital acquired infections are expensive. As a rough estimate, they cost between $3.5 and $10 billion. Most of these expenses are related to increased length of hospital stay and the additional care patients receive. We know that hand hygiene is the most effective means to minimize the spread of infections, yet nearly half of healthcare workers perform hand hygiene less than half of the time. I would like to talk to you about hospital acquired infections which occur in the perioperative environment. 20% of the cases involve surgical site infections, inappropriate use of antibiotics or indwelling instrumentation. This can also be related to a break in technique or glove integrity. Following the AORN standards, excuse me, the AORN standards for surgical hand asepsis is the primary defense to minimize the spread of these infections. Hand hygiene occurs early in education and novice nurses have minimal exposure to the perioperative environment. Nursing education is at a pivotal point between innovation and technology. The benefits of simulation are fairly well known. One of the first benefits is the opportunity for learners to practice clinical skills and utilize critical thinking. Through simulation, learners have the opportunity to practice teamwork and collaboration. Learners also practice communication techniques, utilizing a closed loop process to acknowledge and report patient status. Simulation allows participants to practice various roles safely, such as nurse, team leader, or family member. Simulation provides a safe and supportive environment and can be applied to various settings. Most importantly, simulation is a way to increase knowledge. 
I would like to share with you my purpose statement and my problem statement. My problem statement is there is limited evidence about hand hygiene and simulation. Therefore, my purpose was to determine the effect of simulation on hand hygiene compliance, and my subjects were novice nurses. As with all DMP projects, I chose a project for improvement. I intentionally limit, limited my project to the perioperative setting. I had two aims in this project. The first was to determine if simulation of surgical hand hygiene prepares the novice nurse to meet competencies of AORN standards. Second was to utilize these findings to make recommendations for perioperative training programs, which we will hear more about at the end of this presentation. I began the project by developing a PICO question. My PICO was, does the addition of hand hygiene simulation model compared to lecture alone increase hand hygiene compliance in the perioperative settings? My PICO question allowed me to explore the literature and what I'd like to share is that there are seven major areas of literature around hand hygiene. And while you see seven listed, I narrowed my project to teaching methods. From the literature, I derived a practice question. My practice question was, does the inclusion of a hand hygiene simulation model prepare the novice nurse to demonstrate hand hygiene for the perioperative setting? All DMP projects use a theoretical framework as a foundation. I chose two theoretical frameworks. Most of you are already familiar with Patricia Benner. This was appropriate for this study as it aligns well with the novice nurse. So I chose this as my first framework. The second framework I chose was the perioperative patient focus model as this is the framework that ARN uses to guide all of their 32 standards. Although there are four domains in this model, my focus was on safety and the area of preventing infections and their impact on the health system. I would like to share with you the methods I undertook to complete this study. First, I would like to share how I complied with ethical guidelines. IRB approved this study as the benefits far outweighed the risks to the human subjects. All my subjects were voluntarily recruited and gave their informed consent to participate in the study. I maintained confidentiality throughout the study. The study was conducted in a Southern California Community College Sim Lab. I utilized a number of instruments and tools to complete this study, which included a demographic questionnaire, a knowledge-based pre and post test. I did a lecture and a demonstration of simulation of a simulation scenario and an observation of each subject utilizing the competency verification tool. I witnessed 15 points of observation. I'd like to describe my sample for you. There were 20 ADN nursing students, which 90% of were between the ages of 19 and 35. My subjects were predominantly female and predominantly third semester students. 50% were Hispanic, 30% were Caucasian, and the remaining 20% were distributed across African-American, African-American, Asian, or other ethnicities. Now, I'd like to tell you what I found. I looked for the differences in the pre and the post scores. I wanted to know if simulation made a difference in testing for hand hygiene knowledge. What I found was a significant difference in the scores. I call your attention to the mean of the pretest, which was 4.9, and the mean of the post test, which was 8.05, with a p value of zero. I would also like to point out that 18 of the 20 subjects increased their scores 
and no scores decreased. Using the competency validation tool, I observed the participants performing surgical hand hygiene. I think they did really well. 97.5% of the time, they performed hand hygiene successfully. I want to call out two areas where they did, they did not perform as expected. The first involved sequence order, where the, not dunning a mask prior to turning on the water and applying product prior to water was observed. The second was not cleaning under the nails properly prior to the surgical scrub. These are all valuable teaching opportunities. I was even able to talk with my subjects upon completion. What they expressed was how hand hygiene was taught in the first semester, and this was good to reinforce their knowledge. The subjects also expressed how much they enjoyed learning in this environment as they felt safe and stated this was valuable information to take to the bedside. The subjects recommend having this type of simulation prior to their NICU experience, as they are required to perform a hand scrub. Finally, the subjects re recommended having more exposure to the perioperative environment. The literature was very evident regarding the need to improve competency in hand hygiene. We know that novice nurses are vulnerable as we looked at the Patricia, Patricia Benner's Novice to Expert Framework. Based on what I found, this simulation model is an effective strategy to assess competency in various settings. I draw conclusions that simulation is an effective means to assess competency for hand hygiene. This is an opportunity to reinforce infection control standards. Turning back to the perioperative model, this is an opportunity to improve patient outcomes. Now, I would like to tell you what this opportunity represents for service and academia. There is an opportunity to jointly prepare nurses transitioning to practice in order to meet the needs of the nursing shortage in specialty areas. Simulation models will decrease cost associated with the orientation process. In addition, simulation can be an opportunity to increase revenue for or relate it to the simulation lab. So now I would like to tell you what this means for our college. Simulation addresses the Board of Registered Nurses initiative to prepare nurses for perioperative care. Simulation introduces students to evidence-based practice and is a valuable means to educate nurses. This increases educational opportunity. This is also an opportunity to explore potential partnerships with service as a business model. Simulations foster active student engagement and enable students to transfer knowledge from one environment to the other. Has students utilize critical thinking skills This concludes my presentation. Are there any questions? Uh, I have a question. Dr. Bean. So, um, you said here in your demographics that 70% of your students that you evaluated or tested were third semester students. Correct. So the other 30, they were outside of that, obviously, first, second, and fourth semester? They so, were fourth semester, actually. Oh, so there was, this was not a previous, this was a previously learned skill by all students. Yes. Oh, fantastic. And you still saw an improvement using the competency verification tool. Absolutely. Can I ask you, where did you get that tool from? That tool is from the association, the ARN, oh, and that okay. is their competency verification tool. And I have that for your review when we're done here, if you'd like fantastic. to see it. Thank you. I really like the service as a business model that you brought up. That, uh, because they're always looking to partner with our college students. And, um, we could even do some periodic. Yes. Like As a matter of fact, there was mention of that when I was at one of our local hospitals. So yeah. I was very excited about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how did you pick such a great topic? Uh, well, I, I picked, thank you for that question, Dr. Armini. I picked this topic 
because I'm a perioperative nurse and an educator. And when I had a loved one in the hospital for over six months, I noticed a lack of hand hygiene. And I also noticed my loved one developing surgical site infections. And it led me to research the literature, and this is what I found. So this can improve patient outcomes. Okay. Great job. Thank Great you. Job. Thank you. Very well done. Yes, nicely done, uh, Colleen. Thank you. Um, do I need to say anything else or do, do I? I think in the interest of your meeting, we will go ahead and sign off so that you can continue your meeting. Thank you.